Okay, beautiful. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, those of you that know me know that in the last year, I moved to Northern California, where there is a huge vegan community. We get together several times a month eating at the wonderful restaurants here. Some aren't even vegan, but they have a vegan menu and an SOS-free menu, meaning no sugar, oil, or salt. But once a month, we have a potluck and and the last potluck, my friend Gerald brought this potato salad. And I like potato salad. It's not anything that I think about often. I eat it when it's there. I don't really make it. But I got to tell you, it was the best potato salad I ever made. And he said he found it on a blog and he gave me the name of the person. Her name is Kathy Carmichael. Turns out I met her, but I didn't know that at the moment. And she agreed to come on and show you really what I think is the best potato salad I ever ate. And I would like you to make it and tell me if you agree. Please welcome to the show, Kathy Carmichael. It's so fun to have somebody make something that I love so much. Well, I'm so glad you loved it so much. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So you got a wonderful apron, Vegan Ninja. So let me hear your Vegan Ninja story. My Vegan Ninja story really doesn't have much to do with me as it does my mother. Um, when I was growing up, my mom had multiple sclerosis. Um, she was diagnosed at 14, and she was told not to have children, but she did anyway. She had my sister and I, and when I was about 10, she was paralyzed on one side of her body and blind, and my grandma came and she would take care of us in the morning, and the prognosis was not good. And she met a friend who brought over Dr. John McDougall's tapes. They were actually cassette tapes at the time, if anybody remembers what those are. <laughs> and she listened to them and she followed the diet completely. And her MS has been in remission since. She's now 80. Wow. So, so um, I started eating like this mostly because I saw it was healthy and it helped her. Um, I actually, to tell the truth, did it more for weight than I did for anything else, weight loss rather than, you know, something for my personal health. Wow. Well, fantastic. And so your mom's still around, huh? Yes, she is. She is still around. I moved her out to Scottsdale about a year ago. That's fantastic. Does she like your potato salad? Uh, she loves everything I cook so much that she wants me to cook for her every day. <laughs> <laughs> Can you blame her? No, I guess not. My husband actually likes my food too now. He used to be the, you know, meat and cheese and didn't eat a lot of vegetables, didn't even know what a leek or a shallot was until he met me 14 years ago. So he is now a, he's joined the crew. That's fantastic. Love it when the family's all on board. It makes eating together so much easier, doesn't it? It makes it much easier. I agree. Yeah. So when did you start your blog? Tell us about your blog. Um, I started my blog while I was teaching. Um, and I've been retired now for five years. I taught for 30 years. I was a high school English teacher. And I started making recipes, but I, I wanted to remember the recipes that I made. And so I started just recording them in WordPress, not really doing anything with them. And then my son is a techie and he said, you have to put this online. And I said, well, I don't know how to do that. And he said, well, I'll show you. And he did. And it just kind of blossomed from there. That's great. How many recipes would you guess are on your blog now? Oh, hundreds. Have you ever thought about making a book out of them? I have. I have an ebook, but um, we've talked about a cookbook. People keep asking me about a cookbook. I just haven't done it yet. There's so many cookbooks. But there's none with this potato salad in it. <laughs> and that is true. There's none with this potato salad in it. Why do I love this potato salad so much? You have so many potato salad recipes on your blog, too. I think, it's the, I think it's the dressing. Yeah. You could drink the dressing. And the dressing isn't just used for the potato salad. I use it to marinate tofu. I use it to marinate vegetables before I grill them. Um, I've used it as a vegetable dip before on top of the sandwich. I mean, it's, it, we just love it. I usually triple the recipe, 
But because it's homemade and doesn't have any preservatives or anything, it only lasts like five days in the refrigerator. So you can't make too much unless you're going to eat it all. Right. Okay. Yeah. Maybe it is. Maybe it's just, it, it was tangy, but it wasn't sour. I mean, you call it Italian potato salad, don't you? I do because it has Italian ingredients in it and the dressing is Italian. Yeah, that's right. Are there any potato salad secrets? Is there a certain kind of potato you recommend? I do. I like, um, I buy all organic produce, but there's specific ones that, I mean, I think are important, like tomatoes, potatoes. But anyway, I like the gold um, gourmet potatoes because they're super sweet and buttery for a potato salad. I, I, I like those too. They're real creamy, aren't they? They're very creamy. And they're, they come in the perfect size pouch of a pound and a half is what the recipe calls for. So you don't have to buy more than one bag. And they're just, they cook really well. Um, I don't have, I leave the skin on because I want them healthier. And so it, they're just, they're great. I love all potatoes though. I like red potatoes for this salad as well. All right. Your kitchen is so beautiful. Do you do any cooking classes or demonstrations from your kitchen? No, I do not. In fact, I'm not usually a video person. So this is the first one I've ever done. I usually just kind of take pictures of my food and print them up. And I'm not usually out there. Well, thank <laughs> so this you. is new for me. Well, thank you. You're doing great. And thank you so much for being willing to do it. You know, I do it myself, but I'm too lazy. <laughs> Well, I think I'm a messy cook, so that's why I don't really like to put myself out there. Yeah, I am too. But that, you know, they, I think that, that that's part of the fun, isn't it? As long as you have somebody else to clean them for you. Exactly, which I don't. <laughs> oh, how many potato salads do you anticipate are on your blog? Because I remember when um, I did it. around five or six. Wow. Mm -hmm. but of uh, do you have as a blogger? Do you are you able to see how popular a recipe is? I am. And this is one of them that's pretty popular. Um, my lentil meatloaf is probably the most popular recipe. Oh, nice. I should have had you make that too. That is amazing. Hey, does your well, you'll have to invite me back and I'll make it for you. Oh, that's fantastic. Does your mom still have any signs or symptoms of MS? Well, actually, um, she recently had an accident. And when she was at the hospital, they thought that it was, the, you know, her MS and they did the tests and she had no, she still doesn't have any new lesions. So it was from the accident versus, you know, the lesions from MS. So no, I mean, she's always um, had to use a cane, you know, ever, even forever. I mean, she's kind of like Dr. McDougal where there was some damage that couldn't be replaced, but she's... 80 years old and she eats vegan and she's you know she's spicy as ever <laughs> great well adaria who's watching live says she loves getting your recipes by email they're very tasty and lots of comfort food and somebody must have tuned in late they go what what's your name and what's the name of your blog kathy's vegan kitchen that's uh that's easy to remember because you're kathy where'd you get your apron my husband bought it for me. That's really cute. It, it was a gift. I get lots of little kitchen gadgets. And, you know, it seems that every holiday has a kitchen something attached to it. Like my favorite spoon. <laughs> That's adorable. With a I know. But it's, you know, it's fun. I love kitchen gadgets. I'm running out of place to store all my kitchen gadgets. I live in Arizona. So my house, I, I left my house in Michigan that had a big basement and big storage and now in Arizona, they don't have basements or storage. So it's it's been interesting. Uh, do you prefer the warmer weather to the colder weather that you use? Oh, yes. I never want to go back. Yeah. yeah. No, I love it here. Michigan was one of the coldest places I've ever visited. I remember it was six degrees when I was well, there. I lived there for 50 years, so I know all about it. How did you do that? I don't know. I had to finish that teaching career before I could move. What did you, what, which grade did you teach? I, I'm sorry. Which grade did you teach? Uh, nine through 12. And you weren't vegan back then, right? I was. Oh, you were? Did you ever get to put that in the curriculum in some subtle ways? 
actually, I taught health for a long time, health and nutrition, and we used to make vegan recipes. Yeah, yes. that's yeah. very cool. And I would teach them how to veganize recipes to make it easier. I mean, it's really easy. If anybody gives me a recipe and says, I wish you could, somebody could make this vegan, I can pretty much figure it out. So that's how I do it. Um, for instance, I use hearts of palm to make a lobster roll or calamari. Nice. Well, maybe that could be the name of your book. Anything you can make, I can make vegan. I like it. Yeah, that was, that's really cool. I'll steal it. You're um, with the potato salad. You always cook your potatoes in advance, right? Um, I do. Yes. And do you, do you uh, steam them, microwave them, instant pot? Actually, I boil them and I cut them into quarters, but um, you know, all the potatoes inside the bag are different sizes. You know, they're not the same size. It would be really nice if they could come all uniform sizes, but potatoes don't come like that. Yeah, so well, do that. That would be so cool, wouldn't it? I know, but I, I think then they might be genetically modified. So I don't really know about that. Right. But so the goal is to make them the same size when you boil them. So we don't have some that are undercooked and some that are overcooked. It looks like you're going to use a little chopping machine to get that. Well, that's an option. So for instance, this potato, for instance, right here is a fairly large one. So if I quartered that, I would cut it in half and make quarters out of it. But this tiny little one, I have to make it kind of the same size. So I would cut it in half. And I prefer everything bite size so it all kind of matches in the bowl when you eat it. Yep. But some people prefer the little cubes of potato versus a quartered potato. Do you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So for instance, they prefer something that looks like this in uniform size. And then if I make it using the vegetable chopper, I generally chop all the vegetables with the same chopper blade size. So it's kind of uniform, almost like a chopped salad, but it's potato. No, oh, that's great. Yeah. So, and you know, a lot of people, they struggle with eating like this from what I understand, because they think it takes so much time and that they have to prep everything. Everything has to be cut. And they ask me, are there ways to reduce cutting? Yeah, there is. And there's an older people who have a hard time cutting a little cheapo vegetable chopper is, is a fantastic way to cut everything. Literally. And what did you call that vegetable chopper? Did you call it by the brand name? Oh, it's a um, full star. You can buy it on Amazon and it has a small chopper and it has the one that I used for those potatoes, a large chopping blade. And so you really get to pick which one you prefer for whatever you're doing. But that really helps people in terms of if people have a hard time um, with their hands, they have arthritis, or they don't want to chop everything because it's too exhausting because they have issues with their hands, one of these things is just wonderful. I think it's like $23 or something. I mean, it's really not a lot of money. Yeah. So I would recommend one of those. Love it. And then otherwise, you know, with the boiling of the potatoes, you really, really just need to have them be uniform size. So again, like I said, this one was quartered while this one was cut in half and they're very similar because you really don't want a mushy potato next to one that's hard, especially in a salad. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So yeah, so I did make the potatoes beforehand because they take 20 to 25 minutes to cook, but in the event that you use the cube potatoes instead, they're much smaller. So they only take like 10 to 15 minutes. But again, all potatoes are different sizes. And depending on even if you have larger potatoes than what I'm using today, they're going to take a little bit more time. So I suggest you fork test them and you put the fork into the potato to make sure it's fork tender. And then if it is, your potatoes are done. So I generally wash them. 
I don't just put a timer on for 20 minutes and walk away. And I even, you know how you do with noodles where you check to see if they're done? I'll do that with a potato. I'll pull a potato out and I'll kind of cool it off a little bit and I'll bite it just to make sure that it's right. Yeah, good idea. But the dressing is the thing I think you like. So I think we're gonna make that first. Is that okay? Yeah, please. Okay, so I cut everything up already so it wouldn't take too long, but this recipe does have a lot of ingredients. I'm not going to lie, it does. It's not something where you just throw three things into a, into a measuring cup and it's done. So you're gonna start with two different types of vinegar. So there's a half a cup of red wine vinegar, a half a cup of white vinegar, and oh, then a half a cup of water. And the water is my little trick, or I'm sure it's everybody's little trick, of you don't use oil. So when oil is in any recipe that maybe you want to veganize or you want to make healthier, you put the same amount of water in that you that the recipe calls for for, for oil. So mm -hmm. that's you know what I'm saying to, as, a, as a guide. Then this has um, two tablespoons of stone ground mustard. And if you don't have stone ground mustard, you could use something like Dijon mustard or something along those lines. Then, yeah, I have all my messiness going on over here. Then there is a half a cup of minced red onion and it's minced. It's not just diced, it's super, super tiny. So you have to chop it, not just use a vegetable chopper, but you need to, it needs to be finely, finely grated. And you could also use one of those box graters if you wanted. Then I also have the same amount in a green pepper that is done exactly the same way. And that goes in there. And then my girlfriend, Kim from Michigan, who I taught with, who I love dearly, she makes homemade Italian seasoning and she sends it to me in the mail. And it's the best Italian seasoning I've ever had in my life. She makes it from her garden. And it's just fabulous. But any Italian seasoning will work. I like the one from Trader Joe's. And there's a Whole Foods one I like as well. So we have two tablespoons of Italian seasoning. And then Wait a minute. we have fresh parsley. Excuse me for and one you minute. You use, green, you use green bell pepper, but I'm looking at the recipe and it says red bell pepper. That's in the actual salad itself. In the oh. um, dressing, it has green pepper. Oh, okay. I didn't realize that. No, nope, that's okay. And then there's a quarter cup of fresh parsley and I grow my own parsley and my own basil and everything out back in my yard. Living in Arizona, you can grow this stuff all year round. I have a rosemary bush that looks like a, like a hedge in my yard and it's fabulous. But anyway, so we have a quarter cup of parsley and then a quarter cup of fresh basil. And then the sweetener, you're either going to use maple syrup or date syrup, whichever you prefer. And it's one tablespoon of the maple syrup. And then I lost my, oh, we can't forget the, the other part here. Um, a fresh lemon, the juice of a whole lemon. And then I have this handy dandy little garlic plate that my husband bought me. And it has little nugs in it. I got it, he bought it for me at like a craft show. And it has this little brush and you take the garlic cloves and you rub it in there and it minces it just really nice. And then you use the brush to scoot it into the measuring cup. You gotta get it all in there because that is just love garlic. I recently saw they have garlic that is already um, peeled 
in little packages at the grocery store, it's not the same. I still like the real fresh garlic. Even though it's fresh, it's just not the same. And then what you're going to do is you're going to whisk it together. And as you will notice, it's a little chunky, but it's supposed to be, obviously, because of the minced vegetables that are in it. And that's it for the dressing. And now we'll make the potatoes. See, when I had that dressing, I didn't realize that there were even pieces of green bell pepper in it. Yes, and it kind of mixes in with the salad. And honestly, if you make it the day before, it's even better because all of the herbs and the, the flavors, they all kind of soak into the potatoes. It's, I think it's better the next day. I think lots of things are better the next day. Okay, so now, our goal. You, you know, I want to make a point. Mona's saying that's a lot of tartness, two, vigor, two vinegars and lemon. And you would think that, Mona, but I'm not somebody that really likes sour things. I did not find your dressing too tart or sharp for me. I think the, um, the mustard, the maple syrup, and the water with the combined vegetables, it seems to dull it down because I don't like sour either. Yeah. So, it, Yeah. Yeah, it, didn't, like it, it did not taste tart to me, Mona. And I have a real, I don't, I never liked sour things like sweet tarts or sour patch. Oh, but me it, either. Those sour patch things? Because no. <laughs> I'm curious, you use both red and white vinegar. Is there a reason? And how are those two vinegars different, would you say? Actually, the red wine vinegar, it, because it's made from red wine, it has a more robust flavor. And then the white vinegar, it has a contrary acid. And this is going to sound silly. But if you spill, if you spill a glass of red wine onto white carpet and you put white wine on top of that, it will take your red wine stain out. So they have their, their acidity balances and that's why I believe they go really well together. Yeah, they're, they're, it's a fabulous combination. I, I think so. I also, I like champagne vinegar. As an alternative, I mean, I love vinegar. My whole pantry, I have malt vinegar, red wine vinegar. I go to those vinegar shops and I got all those different flavors. I love it. And so I kind of play mixing and matching. And sometimes I make terrible mistakes and we have to go out to dinner. <laughs> That's funny. Now, is your, is your husband vegan also? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it would be so difficult if he wasn't. I know. Now, did you... Were you vegan before him? Uh, yes, for, let's see, I've been vegan 46 years. We've been married almost 30, so absolutely. Yeah, I had to convert mine. Sometimes I call him a Cheegan. He's a cheating vegan. A che I love that. I use that word too, a Cheegan or a new vegan. A Cheegan, yes. Yeah. All right, so I already did the potatoes because they take so long. I didn't want to have you watch me boil potatoes, so here they are. And they're all quartered and they're ready to go and they're cool. Now this salad can be served cool, cold or hot. It depends if you wanna just take the potatoes directly out of the pan, you know, drain them and put them in the bowl, add the vegetables. It's a great warm salad, but there's other variations. So for instance, some people have ever heard of a smashed potato salad? Smashed potatoes? Yes, but a smashed potato salad. I haven't heard of a smashed potato salad. Okay, so if you wanted a smashed potato salad, what you would do is you would pour these into here. We're not going to, but I'm just for arguments. In. You throw the potatoes in here and you would use a potato masher and you would lightly mash them, but you leave chunks. And then you would add the other ingredients and you would also add the dressing. Or you could make a roasted potato salad with all of these same ingredients. And instead, what you would do is you would parboil your potatoes for five minutes, and then you would combine them with the rest of the ingredients, not the dressing, just the rest of the ingredients. You toss them together and bake them at 400 degrees for 30 minutes, take them out of the oven, transfer it to a bowl, and toss it in the dressing, and then you have a roasted potato salad instead. 
So, Kathy, we play this game, you know, uh, people maybe don't realize when they watch the show, either on uh, Facebook or they watch it in the replay, but we play this game, who does the guest look like? What famous actor or actress? And somebody nailed it. And tell me, has anyone ever said you look like Heather Locklear? No. Yeah, I kind of see it. I'll take that as a compliment. Thank you, whoever said that. (laughs) I didn't know about this game you played. Yeah, Cindy, Cindy said it. Thank you. That's a good one. If you can think of another one, let me know. Yeah, we. we well, thank you, Cindy. Okay, okay, so we have the potatoes. If you really want them to be cool, if you're in a hurry and you want the salad cold, you can rinse them in cold water um, just to cool them down quicker. It's just a little shortcut. And then we have one cup of zucchini. And everybody always asks me, how do I get that cute little curve on the zucchini? It's called a crinkler. It's a crinkle cutter. Oh, and it's just nice. a little thing. And you use it and it makes these little cute crinkles if you want to be fancy. You don't have to be fancy. So this is one zucchini and it's cut lengthwise in half and then little um, points. And then I cut those in half. So we're going to put the zucchini in. Red bell pepper, again, bite size, kind of similar to the potatoes and the zucchini. Red onion, which is my absolute favorite. My husband does not like onions as much as me, and he's constantly saying, don't put so many onions in, but I love red onion. It's only a half a cup of red onion, though, because you have more onion inside the dressing, so you don't want to overpower with the onions. I have one cup of cherry tomatoes, and I like the ones that are multicolored um, that I find at the farmer's market. In Phoenix, the farmer's market is all year round, and it's fabulous. And so all the local growers come, and they have the best produce. So, of course, I like to go every single week. And then we have some banana peppers. Now, banana peppers just... They come mild and they come hot. I chose the mild ones and there I just cut them up a little bit and it's a one quarter cup of the banana peppers. And when you're using banana peppers, I always take them out of the brine and put them on some paper towel first. So you get the extra brine out so it doesn't overpower the salad and taste like brine instead of your dressing. And the same thing with the Kalamata olives. So you put a quarter cup of Kalamata olives. Now I know there's some people that don't eat olives because of their natural fat. So you can leave those out if you want. You know, I think Gerald left them out and it was still fabulous. Well, you can leave them out and it would still be fabulous. So now here you have all of everything's in the bowl. We're going to toss it together. And then you really only need it. The, the dressing recipe makes two cups, and you only need one cup for the recipe. You don't want too much dressing, but I always put the dressing recipe on because once you taste the dressing, you wish you had it more on the potato, more for more reasons than the potato itself. So you want to take a cup of the dressing and pour it onto the salad. And you're going to mix it up. And all those flavors get coated in there, in the potatoes. And then I grab some fresh parsley and some fresh basil, more than what's in the recipe, just to garnish it on the top. Then I suggest refrigerating it for at least an hour, just for the best flavors. And when she said it's the best salad you've ever had, then. And you know what? I was like, usually, you know, and, and then there was a little bit left and he took it home. I'm like, why didn't you leave it for me? Now you got to make it a <laughs> month, you know? Oh, you hosted the pot luck and you took his salad home? <laughs> I love it. Oh, and that's it. And then the rest of the dressing, you can keep in a container, again, like three to five days. My mom always says to me when I bring her food, did you bring me more salad dressing? 
And I tell her, I said, you can't keep it. You can only keep it for three to five days because it doesn't have preservatives or anything in it. And she said, well, can you make me more and more often then? <laughs> sure. <laughs> so I did. Well, all my dressings are homemade. And that is it, I think. Wow. Of all your recipes, which one is your husband's favorite? Oh, well, you're going to like this. He said today, do I get to eat that potato salad again? And I said, what do you mean? He said, he never gets to eat something twice because I always have to make new things. And so if he likes a recipe, he never thinks he's ever going to have it again. Oh, that's so there's that. But I make a portobello mushroom wellington um, a lot during Christmas that he likes. He loves the meatloaf. That, or the lentil loaf, it's not really meatloaf. Um, he's a pasta guy. He likes the pasta recipes that I make. But honestly, he eats whatever I make and he takes it for lunch the next day and he's as happy as happy can be, so. Are any of your friends where you live or where you used to live vegan and or plant-based? Um, no, they're not. But they're, they were always very nice and accommodating in terms of looking where we we're going to eat at a restaurant or having my girlfriend, Kim, if I came to her house for dinner, she always had something that I could eat. Um, so, and my sister is not vegan either. My, my, my daughter is and her son and my son-in-law, they're both vegan too. Nice. Yeah. It's really nice when everybody comes for, for dinner because I don't have to make two things anymore. What did you find more vegan friendly? Were you Michigan or Arizona? Oh, Arizona by far. There are so many wonderful vegan restaurants. They're very accommodating in terms of, you know, no oil, no this, no that. They, uh, it, and there's so many. I mean, you could go somewhere different every day. That's great. Tell us what you eat in a day, Kathy. I'm not a big breakfast person. Um, but I generally eat a very big nutrient dense salad for lunch, which probably has everybody jokes on my blog about my salads. I make enormous salads full of veggies. And so I usually eat that. And then, you know, at night I would, or for an evening meal, we'd maybe have a lentil loaf or we would have a pasta dish or grilled tofu. We use our grill a lot here. Oh, what do you grill? Like skewers or portobello I do, I do skewers. We do tempeh and tofu. We do vegetables on the grill. We make portobello mushroom burgers. I may have a lot of, I make a beet burger that can grill. I, I make a chickpea burger that can go on the grill. Lots of burgers. We like the burgers. I make a mushroom burger. He likes burgers. Do you tend to be more of a savory recipe creator than a sweet recipe creator? Yes, I am not. That is one of the, yes, I am not a dessert person at all. My <laughs> husband, on the other hand, loves sugar, but I have never liked dessert. And so if that's never, if there was a cake sitting on the counter, I'd walk by it. There's that's no, I would never. So that's really incredible that you never like dessert. There isn't even one dessert that maybe would catch No, your- and I don't like chocolate. I don't. I'm the only person I know who doesn't like chocolate. I don't, I worked at a candy store when I was younger. So maybe that's why, I don't know. But I just, I really don't like dessert, but I love savory food. Do you like fruit though, even though it's sweet? I love fruit. Well, I get- Watermelon is my favorite. You know, I bet a lot of people wish they could trade places with you because so many people struggle with food addiction, which I feel is usually, you know, in the sugar. Well, I know, but I have never met a French fry I didn't like either. So I don't know. <laughs> so you got your own thing. You got your own thing. I do. I bake my, I bake the potatoes. I don't fry them, but I love the air fryer. That was like the best invention known to man. Do, do you have the Breville? No, I have a Cuisinart one that literally takes up half my counter over here. It's a large one. We, I used to have um, like a small one. And, and as I started to use it, I thought, oh, I have to get a bigger one. So not, we hardly use our oven anymore. Same here. I just use my air fryer for everything. Yeah, me too. And it's just my husband and I now because the kids are all gone. And so it's, it's much easier to use the air fryer. 
Nice. Yes. You know, your, your, your dish is so pretty. Do you think you could come up even closer to the camera so we could get a close up? You want me to push it right through that video camera, don't you? So you can have that. <laughs> I mean, it just looks so delicious. It is. And my husband's really excited about eating it today. Oh, well, he can thank me then. Hey, you know, he can. now you, you mentioned you always make your own dressings. And I'm curious if you ever use balsamic vinegar for anything. I do. I do. I use balsamic vinegar often. I actually buy a bunch of different flavor vinegars from a vinegar store in town. And so I make up my own concoctions and I just, I love it. I use cashew so sometimes too, or silken tofu for a creamier dressing. Like one of my most popular dressings is my Southwest dressing. And it's super easy. It has salsa, water, lime, and cashews. Or if you don't eat cashews, silken tofu or white beans. And it is, you throw it in the blender and it's done. And it's great on anything Mexican, anything. That's great. Well, I don't know if you know, you get two free bottles of California balsamic, California balsamic vinegar and the flavor of your choice just for being on the show. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. And so maybe they'll have some different flavors, like in the store that you go to, what's, what's the name of the store? Uh, it's called, it's actually called like an oil store, but they sell the, the vinegar in it. It's in Cave Creek. I can't remember the name, but um, they have lemon flavored balsamic vinegar. They, I mean, it's just, they have jalapeno flavored. They have every, and, and they have little tasters, kind of like, kind of like wine tasting, but it's, but it's vinegar. It's so fun. The, great. Well, so this company has all those flavors you mentioned, but they also have some really interesting flavors like curry and jalapeno lime and teriyaki. So I hope you'll find two you like. Oh, I'm sure I will. That teriyaki one already sounds delicious. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I, there's a question for you in the chat. Yes. I saw it. It was from uh, somebody saying maybe more you look like Meg Ryan, but it was about, oh, here it is. Cindy wants to know, can you freeze the dressing? You know what? I tried and no, you can't. Because of the fresh vegetables that are in there, that green pepper and the onion, it gets super mushy and soggy once it, once it, um, it thaws. So no. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I mean, there's no oil in your dressing. And really, I would say there's also no sugar and salt because you can make it with a date or date syrup and you can, right. you know, and, and there are salt-free mustards. So it, it's, that's what my friend used when he made it. Okay. Okay. And now somebody's saying Naomi Watts. So maybe you look like a smush, a conglomeration. <laughs> of them. Um, who is the one that was on the blind side? That's the only one I've ever Sandra um, Bullock. Oh, yeah. That's, that's the only one I've ever heard. Well, hey, that's pretty good. I know, right? I'll take anything, right? Look like anybody that, that looks better than I do. <laughs> that's amazing. So now, who's, your, who's your star look like? Me? Uh-huh. I don't know. I, I, I don't think I look like anybody famous. Oh, I, we've ne I, they've never played the game with you? Well, the, you guys can play it now. I used to get somebody on one of the Star Treks, not the original one, but there was someone, I guess she had short hair and, and they used to say, I look like her and I don't know who that is, but I, I always get, I look like somebody's cousin, Debbie. That's what I hear. Well, you look like my cousin, Debbie. Okay. So Marlary says, how do you like to season your air fried potatoes? I like garlic powder. I like onion powder. Um, I like things spicy, so I like cayenne or smoked paprika. When you say you like things spicy, do you like them a little spicy or really spicy? Well, I am more on the spicy side than my husband is, so I always add more after I cook. And I tell everyone in my in the blog that I anybody who comments that you always err on the side of caution and add a tiny, tiny bit to begin with. And then add more as you go to your liking because everybody has a different taste calculator in terms of hot stuff. Like my daughter, if we go to Thai, she orders like chef hot. And I can't, I'm, my nose is running. I can't eat that. Wow. Well, if you like spicy, then you might want to try as one of your two free samples, either Sweet Heat, which I think is only mo moderately spicy, or Blazing Habanero, which is really spicy. Oh, I like, I might like that Blazing Habanero. 
Yeah. Oh, that's going to be fun. So you're completely retired now? I am five years ago, um, as of June 15th. Yes. So how do you spend your time playing pickleball? I cook all day long and I take pictures of food and I blog about it. I also exercise a lot. We live in a beautiful place. So I walk about seven, eight miles a day in the morning. Wow, that's fantastic. And I listen to, and I listen to your podcast. Oh, and I, I walk and I come home and then I usually cook and do a lot of stuff. And I, I do stuff with my mom a lot. Well, that's nice. Does she cook anymore for herself? No, she's not cook for herself at all anymore. I cook everything. <laughs> I imagine she must live close, right? She does, not even a mile down the road. Oh, that's fantastic. Yes. Did with her story and your story, did that influence any of your friends or family members to improve their diet? Um, my son was vegan for a while. And when he comes here, he eats vegan. But he's, you know, he's one of those big muscly boys who's 27 years old and thinks that he has to have meat despite knowing better. Um, and my daughter, who's 31, and her husband are vegan. And she started when she was in college, I believe, which was a, a struggle. She went to the University of Michigan. She had a very difficult time finding food she could eat in the cafeteria. But that, that's changed a lot since then. Were you involved with PBNSG when you lived in Michigan? Was that near you? My mom was. And so we would go to the restaurants and to some of the talks that um, they had. And then I'm a guest chef on the website. Oh, that's nice. You didn't know my friend Marcy there, did you? The dentist? No, I did not. Too bad. She I did know Amber, who owned a restaurant in Royal Oak, and she was very active in that group. Yeah, it's a wonderful group. We have some of their members on quite about. They say I look like myself. Okay. <laughs> you look like who? They look like myself. Oh, they're saying you were my, I'm th I don't know if they're talking about me or you, Maya Hawk, the daughter of Ethan Hawk and Uma Thurman. So let me look up Maya Hawk. I'll, I'll see what I she don't know they're probably talking talk about you because Uma's blonde, I think. Maya Hawk. Yeah, could be. Yeah, it's just a fun little, fun little crazy. Well, you know, it all started because one of the regular guests, Dr. Scott Harrington, looks like Tom Cruise. And that's, that's kind of how the game started. I oh, think. well, that's not a bad person to look like either. Yep, yep, yep. So do you travel a lot, Kathy? Uh, we're traveling more. My husband still works. Um, he was a he was an engineer for 30 years for General Motors. And when I wanted to move here, when we retired, he took a job with Honeywell Aerospace, and now he works for Nikola, which is a um, semi-hydrogen-powered vehicle. And so he still works. Um, he was funny. He came home today because technology is not my, not one of my strong points. So he came home today from work to give me a little hand with the camera and the oh, that was nice. Well, you don't need to know technology when you're as good as I, I think he came home to eat the potato salad first. Yeah. Well, I wish I could have some of that. And I have a feeling we have a potluck this weekend that Gerald or somebody is going to bring it. So you have a potluck every week? Not every week, at least once a month. Okay. How many people are involved? Oh my gosh. Probably at least 50 each time. I would say we get a big 50 group. People? Wow. That's great. And a big group, lots of vegans up here. Uh, Justine is saying any, are dry spices better for the air fryer than wet? I'm not sure what wet spices are. Yes. She means fresh ones. Yes. Okay. Dry herbs are much better, but when you use dry herbs, you should always use half the amount that's called for in the recipe. If you're for fresh ones because they're much stronger than the fresh ones. But the secret, I think, to your the deliciousness of your uh, salad is the fresh herbs. It is. And I think you should use fresh herbs all the time. But if you put fresh herbs on top of tofu, for instance, in the air fryer, they burn up. And I only know this because I've tried and failed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Cool. Well, there's a, lot, there's a lot of failure in vegan cooking, like learning to cook this way. Yeah. Well, uh, how many recipes uh, do you make a day? Like new ones? Do you do try to do a new one every day? I do a new one every day. Wow. Yes. yes. And how, how I, we have the information in the show notes. If people want to, you know, subscribe to your blog and get the free recipes. I'm pretty sure you put it in there. Yes, you did the blog. Yes, 
Instagram. And we have a Facebook recipe share group where people join so they also can share recipes. They're not just mine. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, Kathy's mm-hmm. in the kitchen. I see that. Yeah. Oh, that look, looks beautiful. Oh, the photography is wonderful. Fun. Well, thank you for being vegan and for creating such delicious recipes. Well, thank you for inviting me. I appreciate it. Oh, and thank you for getting back to me. Your kitchen is beautiful. So is your food. So are you. And thank you for coming home. And now he gets to enjoy his potato salad. I hope so. Just in time for the 4th of July. Yep. I was hoping actually, you know, I was thinking that would be great for Father's Day, but you're right. This would be a perfect 4th of July dish. Yes. Yep. Are there any recipes that you're trying to create that you haven't nailed yet that you're still working on? Um, I had a really hard time for a long time with veggie burgers, but I now I find, I mean, I've struggled. And I had the same struggle with that lentil meatloaf. And I say that in the blog, like I, it would be mushy, it'd be dry. It'd be, and then once you finally get it, it's fabulous. Um, I've tried to make saitan, but I don't like it. But I don't know if I just don't like it or if I can't make it right. I don't really like it. Oh, it's a texture thing. And it's, I tried, I just can't, can't do it. Yeah. It's okay. You do enough. But I've tried and I I fail at desserts miserably. Oh, and that's what my specialty is. I'm actually writing a dessert cookbook. I, for some reason, I just need to connect for that. Baking baking is a science, not just throwing stuff in. And I mean, honestly, I am not a baker. My daughter is more of a baker than I am. Yep. Great. Well, thank you so much, Kathy. Well, thank you. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back at 5 p.m. if you want to see our vegan stand-up comedy show or come back at 2 p.m. tomorrow for another fabulous cooking demo with Nick and Thomas for Vinegar Spice 